just build. Okay, so let's welcome the next speakers. Yeah, thanks, thanks. So, uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Pakata, and this is Piwe. So today we'll be talking about uh, React hooks, uh, the, one of the latest APIs by React. Uh, so hopefully you'll take something away from this small talk. Um, yeah, and it's our first tech talk, so yeah. Uh, temperature check, so who here is React developers? Anyone? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, of course the jump starters, yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, if you're not a React developer, maybe uh, after this you want to take uh, React for a spin, we recommend it. Uh, but yeah. So uh, why did React create such a thing called uh, hooks, uh, th this API? So uh, there were several reasons. So before, if you're familiar with React, uh, there's something called class components, and it could be confusing at times to use class components. And the components are sometimes also huge. And if you're using advanced methods like higher order components, uh, it could lead to something called a wrapper hell. So I'll go through, and go through these three uh, points right now. So class components can be confusing. Um, so this is a very typical React component. Uh, most of the time, you'll need to have a constructor. Uh, there's bindings, and you have to use the this keyword everywhere. So if you miss one or you trip up on something, uh, you might be thinking, like, uh, what's wrong? So And generally, the components are a bit huge. And uh, here, the logic is actually separated in these two life cycle methods. So if you're a React developer, these two methods are very uh, common. So the logic here is separated by life cycle. It's not separated and uh, not, not contained within the same function. So hooks will help to solve that. And yeah, so if you use higher, higher order components and render props uh, to help share stateful logic, uh, this could be the result that you see when you're debugging. So if you have React Dev tools, this is something you might see. It's not very nice. And hooks will aim to uh, help solve this. So we'll go through uh, how hooks will, will solve all these issues today. So now P Wei will talk about uh, as what are exactly are uh, hooks. Yeah. Yeah. So to understand what hooks are, let me first talk a bit about uh, function components. Before React hooks were introduced, function components could not have state and had no access to lifecycle methods, and class components had to be used if you need state and lifecycle methods. But now, function components are not always stateless. Because with hooks, a function component can hook into red state and lifecycle features. And hooks are actually just functions provided by React library. To show you how to use hooks, we have created one simple example. In our example, we implemented only the two common built-in hooks, namely useState and useEffect. And later, Pakata will show you how to build our own custom hooks. Yeah, so this is our example. So um, the section on the right is built using a class component, and the one on the left is created with a function component with hooks implemented. Both the components work exactly the same. They both have one input field, and when I type in our name, it will show the length of the name. <coughs> And when I hover over the, the area below, the title of the browser will change. For example, when I hover over class component, it will change to class component. When I hover over hooks, it will change to hooks. So let's dive in into the first hook, use state. It's the state hook that we use to add local state to a function component. So this is the syntax, use state takes in the initial state value and return an array with two elements. The first element is the current state value, and the second element is a function to update the state value. By convention, <coughs> the name of this function is prefixed with the word set. To declare state, we need a constructor in class component. But by calling use state, it can be done with just one line of code. And this code is cleaner as compared to the one in class component. So in the demo just now, when I type in our name in the input field, this handler, which is defined here, is called to update the state. 
And for this handler to work, we have to bind it inside the constructor. And this is often very confusing. But in, fu in function component, binding of handlers is not needed and the keyword this is not needed. So let me introduce you the second hook, use effect, which is the effect hook that provides us a way to run side effects. So this is the syntax. We pass in the effect function to use effect, and inside this function, we can add side effects and clear the effect by returning the cleanup function. And the second argument is an array of dependencies and effect function will, will only be run when there's a change in the values listed in the array. For example, when A or B changes. And very often, we want to perform some actions when a React component is rendered in the DOM. For example, when Hoverbox is rendered in the DOM, we want to attach an event listener to it. And this can be done with a component deep mount lifecycle methods. The same result can be achieved with use effect. In class component, to clean up an effect is done inside the lifecycle method component view amount. But in function component, we just need to return a function that cleans up the effect. As you can see here, the logic of hovering effect is kept together inside one use effect. But in class component, the logic has to be separated by lifecycle methods. So to use hooks, there are two rules to follow. The first rule is to call hooks only at the top level of a component, and never call them inside loops, conditions, or nested functions. The second rule is to call hooks only from React functions, and not from regular JavaScript functions. And next up, I will pass it to Pakata to show you how to build custom hooks. Yeah, thanks. <coughs> How do I click this? Uh. Okay. So, custom hooks. Uh, so, today we'll write two custom hooks. Uh, the first one will tackle the logic that uh, handles the hovering of the box, where then when it hovers, it changes the title of the browser. And the second custom hook we'll write today will handle the logic that uh, runs the change in the, in the state for the, for the name. So we'll write two hooks to uh, uh, custom hooks regarding these two uh, logic. So So yeah, this is the hooks component. Oops, uh, let me just redo that. Sorry, we were practicing just now, so uh, that's not the code you're supposed to see. Uh, so yeah, I'm running my test, so we've been te uh, taught to do test-driven development. So if we're going to change the code that's already working, we make sure we run our tests. Uh, yeah. So uh, the logic that handles the hovering is inside this use effect here. And let's say, for example, oh yeah, it's good. So, so let's say, for example, uh, we have another component somewhere within the application that needs to have this same feature implemented. So if it's going to share the same logic, what can we do to you know, share it? So by programming principles, if you want to share logic, we extract it. So I'm just going to extract this function. And I'm going to just uh, do uh, create another function called uh, use uh, hover title change. And I'll paste, the, paste this hook here. And I'll change certain parameters. So instead of hard coding hooks hover here, I'll just change it to selector. And I'll change these params to have selector. And you can see it requires this handle title change. Uh, handle title change is here. I'm just going to bring it up again into our new function. And instead of having hooks, I'll, I will also just change it to another variable. So I'll call it um, title. And I will pass it in as a variable here. Save that. So our code will now break. The test will fail. Uh, all I need to do is actually just use 
hover title change. And I'll pass in hashtag hooks. No, hashtag hooks hover. Um, hooks. And our test should still pass. Awesome. And our function is still working. So if I hover over hooks, the title now changes to hooks. So it still works. So what did I just create? This function here is known as a custom hook. And it's just another function that is a custom hooks are just funct normal functions that allow you to share stateful logic between uh, many different components within the application. So how do we share? So I've actually uh, created the exact same function in another, another file. So I'll just remove this whole implementation here and I will import it from that file. So I've imported it from, uh, from, this, uh, from this file, from this folder, and it's called the same, called the same thing, use hover title change. And yeah, so it works. Great. Um, you can't do this so easily with uh, class components, so I'll show the class components. So in class components, our logic for the hovering effect uh, is tightly knit together in the lifecycle methods in component did mount and component will unmount. It's not something you can extract so easily with, uh, with uh, class components. So yeah, uh, the next up, we will try and refactor the logic that handles the change in the input. So the, the logic that handles the change in the input is from this set of code over here. And just like the previous, uh, previous uh, custom hook, I will extract it. And I'll create a new function called use form input. And I'll paste it there. So now, instead of having a hard-coded initial value, I'll just put it as initial value. And I'll pass it in as a parameter. And now this is not going to be name. I'll just set it to something more generic. So I'll call it value. And this will be set value instead. It's, and this doesn't make sense to call it handle name change. I'll just call it handle change. And this will now be set value. Save that. So, so our test will break. Uh, the reason why is because uh, input field here requires a value and requires an on change handler. So previously it was in the code, but now it's gone. So how do we bring it back? All we need to do is just return from this custom hook the value and I'll return the on change handler, which runs handle change. And to use it, I just call it use form input. Uh, it will take in a pway. And it will return a object. So the object it will return is this. But I'll just call it uh, input field props. Save that. So now I'm just going to remove this and destructure input field props. Save that. And our tests are still passing. Fantastic. So the functionality still works. And just like the previous custom hook, I have created another file for it. So I'll just remove the implementation here. And I will import it. So the import is here. This is the import. Save that. And our test should still pass. Fantastic. So as compared to the to the class component. Uh, the class component has about 50 lines of code. Uh, the hooks component, which has exactly the same kind of logic, uh, is only about 24, 25 lines. So hooks, yeah, they're awesome. Right. Uh, yeah, to wrap up, so the pros of using hooks is uh, you have the less, less use of the this keyword in JavaScript. Uh, stateful logic can be extracted and shared among different components. You probably won't run into the wrapper hell as often. Uh, you have smaller components and arguably more understandable ones. And if you are, and there's no breaking changes if you upgrade to the latest React, uh, React version. Cons, uh, not really. We think it's awesome. Uh, so yeah, if you're a new developer with React, uh, we recommend uh, learning your class components. Uh, it's important because a lot of legacy code still uh, requires, uh, uses class components. So don't forget that. Otherwise, thank you for listening. <laughs>